Brothers and sisters, I intend to speak to you tonight, not for a long time, you've been here already a long time. Um, so I'm gonna try to make it short. I want to repeat a dua that I made, the Jummah Khutbah, and I really believe in this, this supplication. Allahumma, this is a supplication of the Prophet, some, Allahumma inni a'udhubika min ilmin la yanfa'u. I seek refuge with Allah from knowledge that don't benefit. If we're gonna sit here tonight for 10 minutes or 10 hours, we should benefit. We ought to ask the question, like, what's in it for me? Everything that we do as Muslims, believe it or not, is like, what's in it for me? A friend of mine named Yaqub from South Africa, he texted me a few months ago. He said, Imam Siraj, do everything with a good heart, expecting no reward. I texted him back. Do everything with a good heart, expecting no reward except from Allah. There's no verse of Quran, no hadith of the Prophet والسلام, where Allah is asking us to do something without giving us a, re a reward. Years ago, when I used to go to Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia, after every program, there were a bunch of young brothers, Muslim youth, who would take me to a, a restaurant and we would stay there for hours talking. And one of them named Ali, about 19 years old, went to California to go to school, to go to college, and he came back to visit me in my masjid in Brooklyn. He said, Imam, can I be honest with you? I said, yes. He said, Imam, I hate going to Juma prayer. I hate it. I said, why? He said, Imam, because it's not relevant. And we as Muslim uh, imams, teachers, principals, parents, have to be relevant to our children so that they continue to practice the faith. So I want to give you something tonight that I think is relevant. A man came to the Prophet والسلام, and said, Ya Khair al Bariya, O best of creation. That's a heavy weight to call someone best of creation. And I'm interested in the response of the Prophet. Someone's calling him the best of creation. What did he say? How he responded? He said, Zaka Ibrahim. That's Ibrahim. And I'm telling you, I can make a compelling argument that the Prophet والسلام, is the best of creation. I could. I'll give you one example, and then I'm going to say why I think the Prophet والسلام, said what he said. He said, the Prophet said, I knocked at the gate of Jannah, and the angel said, Men enter, who are you? Kutu, I said, I'm Muhammad. I'm Muhammad. And the angel of the Jannah, the, God, the angel of the paradise will say, it was for you, I was ordered not to let anyone in Jannah before you. And I can give you a long list of compelling arguments that the Prophet was the best of creation, but I'm not going to do that. Why? Because he said Ibrahim. Why should I go against my Prophet? If he said Ibrahim, he said Ibrahim. He knows. No better than me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try my best to give a compelling argument why. First of all, let us bear witness what Allah said in Quran. Kullu nafsan da'ikatun maut. Every soul shall taste of death. By now, you figured out that it's true. Everybody going to die. Ain't nobody that's not going to die. Prophets die. And there will come a time when everything will be dead except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ask, where are the, where are the kings now? Where are they now? Everybody is dead. He's the only one. And this is why when the Prophet died, وسلم, you know, one of the most pragmatic followers, Umar. Umar is like, he kept it 100. Do you say 100 here in Jersey? <laughs> I want to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. And when the Prophet died, والسلام, Umar lost it. He took out his sword and said, 
Wallahi ma mata Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I swear by Allah, Muhammad is not dead. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, sit down. And Umar sat down. And he said, for those who worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad is dead. Mata Muhammad. But those who worship Allah, Allah is hayyun. Allah is alive and never die. So we understand that, right? But when we die, we be resurrected. You're Muslim, everyone here who believes. Yawm al-Qiyamah, we'll be resurrected. And we will be resurrected naked. Aisha radiallahu anha said, Ya Rasulullah, won't the men and women be looking at each other? Said, oh, 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 not in that day. Mm-mm, you ain't worried about that, not then. So and then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the first one to get dressed on Yom al Qiyam, Ibrahim. That's a great honor, the first one dressed. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, One prayer in my masjid is better than a thousand prayers in any other masjid. Illa al Masjid al Haram, except Masjid Haram. One prayer in Masjid Haram is better than 100,000 prayers in any other masjid. You're beginning to see now a picture. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, I am the da'wah to Abi Ibrahim. I am the answer to the supplication of my father, Ibrahim. He gave an honor and respect to his father, Ibrahim, from the line of Ismail, then the Prophet, descendant of Ibrahim, Every city I go to, every country I go to, I just went to, I just came back from England, in London. Every country I go to, the first thing I find out, what's the direction of the Qibla? You gotta make that prayer. I can't pray anyway. I can't pray any, in any, any direction. So the direction that they pray in London is different from our direction. So I need the people there to show me the direction of the house that Ibrahim made, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you look at the Quran, uh, uh, they say, be Christian or Jew if you're going to be guided aright. Allah said, Kul, bal millata Ibrahim wa Hanifa wa ma kana min al mushrikin. No, 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 no. The religion of Abraham. And Allah said in Quran to the Prophet, follow the religion of Abraham. So this is just a few things to let you see that Ibrahim alayhi salat was salam khairul bariya. And all of this is gonna make sense. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to tie it in because I want this talk to be relevant. I want you to walk away from this talk with something. Um, I believe that brothers and sisters, honestly, if you look what's going around around in the world. We have some very difficult days ahead. All you gotta do, look around. The latest, the floods in Australia. Floods that never happened before. In 2020, there was a, a massive fire in Australia. Three billion animals were either displaced or killed or died. Go around the country, see what's going on, the weather and all of that. Corruption has appeared in the land and sea because of what man's hands have earned in order that we may give them a portion of our punishment so that they may return to us. Corruption has appeared in the land and sea because of man. Who are you? This is why Sir Isaac Newton was right. He said, I can calculate the movement of the stars but not of the madness of man. Crazy. You got crazy people, crazy people in the White House, and don't think now because you got, you got Democrats in the, in the White House, things going to be good. No, you got crazy folks all over, not just Russia, all over the world, people murdering people, all of that. So we have some difficult days ahead, and I mentioned Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam for a reason. I asked myself the question, I, I, I found the verse in Quran, I think, really solidifies why Ibrahim والسلام, is the best of creation. This is it. 
وَإِذْ ذِبَتَ لَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَوْبُهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَتَمْهُنَا And when we tested Ibrahim with test, he passed every test. That's what it is. Th think about it. Yeah, Ibrahim alayhi salat was Listen to what he said. Yeah, Sarah. ala al-wajhi addu mu'min gairi wa garuki. Oh, Sarah, there is not one believer on the face of the earth other than you and me. What? What? The only two people on the planet Earth, now the population is, what, 7 billion, 800 million people, something like that? And at that time, the only two. And Allah tested Ibrahim in unbelievable ways. A man of, of love and compassion, he goes into a desert and take his newborn baby and his wife, give them a bag of dates and some water, and place it down, and then begin to walk away. He don't even look back. And Hagar is following him. Ya Ibrahim, I need Tethab. Ya Ibrahim, I need Tethab. Ya Ibrahim, I need Tethab. Where are you going? And he don't turn around and keep on walking. And then she stopped and say, is it Allah ordering you to do this? He said, yes. And then she said, that we will not be neglected. And she goes away. And this is why, by the way, Allah says in Quran that you have a good example. Fi Ibrahim, wallabina ma'a. In Ibrahim and those with him. Hagar, Ismail, those with him. And then now she runs out of food. There's no more water. And she's running back and forth. That's what we do at Hajj. We run to suffer the model. We go back and forth. And then she hears something. And she looks right in where Prophet Ibrahim put the baby. And she sees. The angel Jabril digging his hail in, in the earth. And then comes the water. Miracles, because Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam passed the test. You are as a result of your test. So you are. Tabarakallah di bi yadihi al muk, wa hu ala kulli shayin qadir, ala di khalaq al mawta wal hayati li abluwakum ayukum asanu amala, wa hu ala zizu ghafur. Blessed be in him, on whose hand is the, 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 uh, the dominion of the heavens and earth. He created death and life to test you who's best at conduct. Everything is a test. We test it every day. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he asked the angels, and, and you've got to understand something about Quran and Sunnah. Whenever Allah asks a question, he never asks a question because you don't know the answer. If he's asking a question, he's teaching a lesson. So he asks the angels, did you take the life of the child of my servant? He said, yes. What did my slaves say? They say, Hamidaka They said, Alhamdulillah. We come from Allah to Allah will return. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Allah said, Ibnu li abdi baytin fil jannah wa sammahu baytul ham. He tells the angels to build a house in jannah for my slave and call it the house of praise. Why? Because when he was tested, the little baby, the little baby died. And this was the response. Was the person said? Sure, the person was said. But they don't say nothing except for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Test. So we test it every day. I know a brother and sister been married for 46 years. Been married 46 years. I know them. The husband don't know who she is or their relationship. A friend of mine, an imam from Arizona, Imam Ahmed, said he went to uh, visit uh, his mother and um, he said to mom, he said, mom, how you doing? 
She said, who are you? Said, Your son, Ahmed. Oh, okay. Five minutes later, who are you? I'm your son, Ahmed. Oh, okay. Five minutes later, who are you, your son, Ahmed? If you think that this life is it, you're crazy. This life doesn't make sense. Arthur Schopenhauer, he's a uh, German philosopher. He called the philosopher of pessimism. He said, life is an endless pain with a painful end. Now, brothers and sisters, you got to be careful of your diet. All of this is going to make sense. By the way, I haven't started this talk yet. No, no, I'm serious. This is my introduction to my introduction. <laughs> so I was in Atlanta, Georgia, right? And so I saw a, a very prominent Muslim uh, cardiologist. I know him, Dr. Niazi. He saw me, he said, Imam Saraj, we have three enemies. I said, yeah. He was agitated. He said, uh, our enemy is sugar. Now, brothers and sisters, please don't be like the Sudanese. They never put sugar in their coffee. They put coffee in their sugar. <laughs> sugar, be careful. Diabetes is serious. Be careful of your sugar. Number two, he said salt, hypertension, high blood pressure. And a lot of us, we have it. We have to be careful. And then he said the third one, I'm not going to mention it unless you make me mention it. Mention it? I, I hesitate because the one I'm going to say you really like a lot is bread. You can eat bread. See, your son gonna say when he see you eating bread, he's gonna say, Dad, what's up? <laughs> right. You can eat bread, but moderation. Anything. You can have some salt, you can have some sugar, you can have some bread, but do them in moderation. Why do I say that? If we have to be careful of what we eat, we must be as careful as what we read. Some of us don't think about it. So what happens. We're so busy listening to the rhythmic beat. So the artist, it could be a song, it could be poetry, it could be a movie, it could be a short, uh, short story, it can be all of those things. You gotta be careful of what you're consuming because you, sometimes you don't catch it. I give an example. Have any of you ever read Shakespeare? Can I do a little Shakespeare tonight? I go for it. How many read Macbeth? Okay, now here's a, here's a point. Sometimes the artist embedded in their work is their philosophy of life. See, so you're looking at the actors, but it's the one who created it. And sometimes they're putting their philosophy. Let me give you an example. Macbeth's wife just died. Listen to Macbeth. Now you think it's Macbeth, Macbeth speaking, it is, but it's really Shakespeare. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and is heard no more. It's a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. What? So you, you see what I'm saying? And it slips right in. Life is a tale told by an idiot. You're talking about the Qadr of Allah? Omar Khayyam, the Persian poet, he put it in a beautiful way, um, in his eloquent way, talking about the Qadr of Allah. And he said something like this, the moving finger writes and having writ moves on. Nor your piety, nor wit can lord back to cancer out half a line, nor all your tears wash out a word of it. Beautiful. So you gotta be careful. So our children think that we're saying, don't listen to this because, don't listen to that, don't watch that, don't listen to that, because it is having a, devast a devastating effect on you. Constant dripping of water on a stone will drill a hole in the stone. Not a tornado, not a hurricane, not a flood, a drip. 
And so as our children watching the television, listening to the music, you know, you know, the poetry and all that stuff, I'm not saying don't do none of that. That's not my point. Because for me, uh, television is neither good nor bad. It's what you do with it. There are some excellent programs on TV. There are some excellent, um, these devices, beautiful things. I, you, know how much, you know how much research I do on this? How many verses from Quran? How many tafsir? How many this and that? So this is not bad. The device is, isn't bad. It's what you do with it. Now, you've got to be careful to navigate our children where they're going. Now, having said that, this is what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to. Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, became who he was because of the test. Inni ja'ilukum linas imamin. I have made you an imam for mankind. That's Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Why? Because he passed the test. You are as a result of your test. See, don't think you're a big shot until you test it. The test will tell what you are. And Allah is testing us. He's looking and, and, and he's going to attest us. So I'm going to conclude with this point here. You know, alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us to see and appreciate Quran and Sunnah. I'm going to give you one hadith that if some people had followed this one hadith, things would have been different. Remember George Floyd in Minneapolis? Um, Derek Chauvin, I think his name, right? He was convicted in the state court, and he's going to serve over 20 years in prison. And not only that, he's facing federal charges, which may, may, he may have to spend another 20 years in prison, right? Look at this hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. I'm saying, brothers and sisters, this deen is the most relevant. It is so on it. Everything is this uh, guided aright, the Quran and the Sunnah. Look, listen to the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, Unsul akhaka zhalimun, zhalimin am mazlumin. Help your brother if he is oppressed or an oppressor. So someone said, Ya Rasulullah, yeah, we help him if he's oppressed. Wa idha zhalimin kayfa ansuruhu. But what if he is the oppressor himself? How do we help him? He said, help him by stopping the oppression. You have an obligation. If it's your president, your general, your husband, your wife, your children, your school teacher, your, the police officer, the, you have the, the responsibility. If they're wrong, you have to mention it. Don't go along with it. No, we're not doing that, Mr. Putin. We're not doing that, Mr. President. We're not doing that, general police officer. We're not doing that. You've got to have the courage to do it because you have a mandate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me show you the wisdom of this. Did you know that in Minneapolis, the family of uh, uh, George Floyd, they gave him $27 million because of what this police officer did. $27 million. Did you know that in the United States, over 2,000 cities, people were demonstrating? Because you know why? They caught it on film. And so many times they lie, but we have the evidence. And when the people saw the evidence, in this country, 2,000 cities demonstrated. 60 countries around the world demonstrated because they saw it. Now, this is the, this is the kicker, subhanAllah. Allahu Akbar. Those three police officers who watched who watched that police officer kill that black man, did nothing. If they followed the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, they went like this, yo man, that's enough. All right? <laughs> no, 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 I took this opportunity. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. <laughs> so I took this opportunity. Now, I love him. Don't, don't misunderstand me. That's a love tap. 
So if they had stopped him, if they had stopped him, no $27 million. Um, Derek Chauvin would not have been arrested in jail now. Not only that, do you know those three officers are also being charged? They call it aiding and abetting. They did nothing. They saw a crime being committed. Nine minutes, nine minutes, killing him. Now they face both state and federal charges. And they can go to jail the same uh, uh, length of time as uh, Chauvin. So brothers and sisters, I'm saying to you that Alhamdulillah, being a Muslim, we have a lot of work to do as Muslims. Now, any brothers here or sisters been in the Marines? Anyone? Do you know the logo of the Marines? Huh? Say it again? No, leave them alone. No, that's, 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 but there's another one. Again? No. Again? Very good. But that's not the right answer. No, no. I'm not saying it's the wrong answer. It's just not the right answer. Huh? No. All of those are good. Huh? Ah! Ah! Come here, man. Come on. Come on, come on, you get up, you, you come over there. You, you, you better come over there, man. You got the right answer, I want you to say it, say it loud. Say it, say it. Take the thing, say it. The few the proud, the Marines. Yes. The few, the proud, the Marines. Ah, no way. You didn't tell me you Googled it, man. You know, there was, a, there was a movie years ago, I think it's called The Few Good Men. It's talking, it was, that's what it's talking about, The Few Good Men. The reason I say that, and I want you to, I'm gonna conclude with this. It ain't the many, it's the few. You are the few. One third of the Muslim ummah live in non-Muslim countries. Where do you find them? You find them in the United States. Maybe the percentage of Muslims in America may be 1%. You want to say 2%? So you find them in the United States, you find them in France, you find them in Belgium, you find them in Germany, you find them all over the world. Few. 1991, I want you to Google this tonight when you go home. You know that the United States Congress never begins except a Jewish rabbi or Christian minister open a session of Congress. For the first time in the history of this country, in 1991, a Muslim opened up a session of Congress. Who was that? Imam Siraj. And I want you to... No, it's true. What do you want me to say? It was me. And I want you to look and see how I was dressed. I was dressed the same way I always dress. I'm not gonna change my dress. This is how I dress, and when you see me, I'm just like that, why? Because I wanted the world to know that I'm a Muslim, and I'm not Khaliful Mushrikeen, be different of the, the, the pagans, uh, the Prophet said, so I'm not trying to be like you, I'm not trying to see, see I'm like you, no. I'm, this, is, this is who we are. You wear kimar, that's who you are. You wear Islamic dress, that's who you are. I'm not saying I'm against wearing suits, I'm not. I did it twice. Uh, no, I did it more than twice, but two things, two things I want to talk about. Number one, there was a brother named Yusuf in my community many years ago was charged with murder, and I was a character witness. And I wore a suit and tie. And the reason I wore a suit and tie, I thought that if I had an Islamic looking dress, wouldn't be good for him. So I purposely wore a suit and tie. The other time is that, you remember Ahmed Didak? Famous debate between Jimmy Swaggart and Ahmed Didak? Who was the moderator? Imam Siraj. Imam Siraj Wahaj. 
And how was I dressed? With a suit and tie. Because Ahmed didn't ask me. He said, you know, Imam, if you come dressed like a Muslim, they may, they may think something. So could you, work, could you put on the suit? I said, okay, I did. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know, I'm not saying it's haram to wear a suit and tie, I'm not. Um, you, you, even if you don't have a, a reason, you know what I'm saying? If you wanna wear a suit and tie, it's fine. I don't, that's not my argument, right? So my point is, is that I am proud to be a Muslim. I, I got, that day, I got phone calls from Mecca. People calling me from Mecca and say, Imam Siraj, do you know that every 15 minutes on the television in Mecca, they have you open up a session of Congress. Muslims all over the world were proud. Look at that, one of our brothers, you know, alhamdulillah, you know? And um, so I'm saying that we are the few. But like in Akhtar al-Nas, la yu'minun, Allah said for that. Most of the people, they don't believe. Most of the people are not thankful. Most of the people don't understand. So you're the few. So my dua for all of you, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you the few. Min kulli awfin tisamiyatin, the Prophet said, from every thousand, 999 in the hellfire. One in Jannah. The few. So you're going to be tested for sure. I know, you definitely, we're going to be tested. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to repeat what I said earlier. You are as a result of your test. You as a result of your test. So Imam, may Allah bless you, Imam Daoud, I'm going to say this, one of my most beloved people on this planet. You have a great, wonderful Imam here. I love him so much. I make dua for him, him and his family. Allah give him long, good, healthy life. Amen. Really, you have, um, if you all get tired of him, we take him to New York. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? You think I'm, you think I'm joking? Imam, they give you a hard time, let me know. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of you. I, I thank you for coming tonight and listening. I pray that you got something. And, and, the, and the, the real lesson I wanted you to get is don't be afraid to be yourself. We Muslims, don't be ashamed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide us. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.